Very good morning. You're watching the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha Television this Saturday morning. All the biggest news from India and across the world coming up in the next 30 minutes. I'm Ashwarya, and these are the headlines. Government refutes a news report alleging parallel negotiations on a Rafale deal. Defence Minister Nirmala Sitaraman calls it a deliberate attempt to create a doubts on the issue. Asserts it is the duty of the Prime Minister to monitor progress in any deal. Prime Minister Modi on a tour to the northeast, scheduled to lay foundation stones for new Greenfield Airport, a Sela Tunnel in Arunachal, inaugurate work on northeast gas grid in Assam, unveil series of development projects in Tripura. Robert Wadrak summoned by the Enforcement Directorate for the third time in four days to be questioned again in money laundering case relating to the purchase of properties in London. Kolkata Police Commissioner Rajiv Kumar to be questioned by the CBI in Shillong in connection with the Chit Fund cases. Supreme Court had fixed Meghalaya capital as the venue for his interrogation. PILs redefined the justice delivery system by becoming the voice of the poor, says President Ramnath Govind at a book release, calls for the need to address new challenges in rendering social and economic justice. The top story this morning, Defence Minister Nirmala Sitaraman on Friday termed as incomplete and distorted the news item published by a newspaper about parallel negotiations by the PMO in the Rafale fighter deal. In an exclusive interview to ANI, she said that doubts were being deliberately, deliberately created in the minds of the people because of some corporate warfare. No, no, this is all that probably that journal, uh, that newspaper had and therefore they published it. Is it not the responsibility of a journalist to search for the next before publishing? Or at least say, we tried getting the answer from the ministry, they did not respond and therefore we are only publishing this much. They have published half-truth, almost as though with an intention and I'm this is my suspicion I'm not throwing it without reason but I have a reason to say this my suspicion is they wanted to create just this uh, you know doubt in the mind of the reader and therefore I'll only put this much but I'll not put the reply even if I don't have it I d I've not even made an attempt to get it so to me it looks very clearly an attempt again by people I do not know whether they are doing it for themselves or they are doing it in response to some kind of a corporate warfare which is going on in this matter. She also asserted that it is the duty of the Prime Minister to monitor progress in any deal or project and if the PMO checks on these, it cannot be termed as interference. The PMO, not just under Sri Narendra Modi, but minister, uh, PMO under... I'm sure any other PM as well, will certainly monitor the progress of activities, not just purchases under defense, but many other, even under Ayushman, Bharat, or Sarvasiksha, Abhyan, or anything of that kind. To consider, and this I very clearly said even in my January 4th reply in the Lok Sabha for the Rafael debate. I had said even then that there are talk among the opposition and some of them raising the question saying questions are being asked about Prime Minister's office interfering in the process. Even at that time I said very clearly if the Prime Minister's office pursues a matter saying what is the progress, how far is it happening, is it happening here, is it happening in France, are you all moving forward, that cannot be construed as an interference at all. She then went on to attack the Congress, questioning the role of the National Security Council headed by UPA chairperson Sonia Gandhi when Manmohan Singh was the Prime Minister. If the legitimate authority, the first among equals, in the cabinet the Prime Minister is the first among equal and collective responsibility prevails if the PMO checks on a ministry, that I shall not construe 
as interference it's more that all of us are equally responsible we have to move forward then if this is seen as interference i want to ask the congress party what was the nac national advisory council under shrimati sonia gandhi it didn't even have a statutory authority it was not a constitutional body it was not part of the pmo in the sense of it had the authority to ask questions it was remote controlling the pmo was that interference can the congress party please answer that and in the lok sabha on friday defense minister nirmala sitaraman dismissed the media report on the rafale jet deal as a flogging a dead horse and she also accused the opposition of playing into the hands of multinational companies and vested interests meanwhile the opposition has demanded a jpc probe into the deal In her address in the Lok Sabha, Defence Minister Nirmala Sitaraman dismissed the report published in the Hindu newspaper on the Rafale deal. She said it is like flogging a dead horse, saying that things have already been clarified on the issue. Targeting the opposition, the Defence Minister said it was playing into the hands of multinational companies and has vested interests. She also accused the opposition of not wanting to strengthen the army. gave a reply even on the 4th january about it that when periodically pmo enquires about the progress of any work that cannot be construed as interference and i would like to remind you madam through you, through you i would like to remind the entire house they are working to the tunes of multinational corporate warfare they are damaging this country i charge them with that offense thank you madam Earlier the Trinamool Congress and the Congress raised the issue in the house and demanded a JPC probe into the case. Why should the prime minister's office interfere about the price? It diminishes, it undermines the negotiating capacity of the defense negotiating team. Outside Lok Sabha at a press conference, Congress President Rahul Gandhi accused the prime minister's office of directly interfering in the Rafale deal, citing the media reports. now it is crystal clear in the hindu newspaper it is black and white it is absolutely black and white that the prime minister himself was carrying out a parallel negotiation with the french we have been saying that there should be a jpc there should be an inquiry now it is crystal clear The government also raised questions on the newspaper for not publishing the reply on the dissatisfaction note of then defense minister Manohar Parrikar along with the defense ministry's noting. News agency ANI has disclosed the noting in which then defense minister Manohar Parrikar had replied. In the note the defense secretary was advised to consult principal secretary to the prime minister and resolve the issue. Former defense secretary G Mohan Kumar has said that the defense ministry did not raise any objection to Rafale's price. Meanwhile Air Marshal SPP Sinha who was heading the negotiating team in the Rafale deal has said that the prime minister's office never interfered in the deal Is negotiations mein kisi tarah ka kisi se ya PMO se koi interference nahi tha hamari negotiation team ne jo bhi hua hai aur jo bhi humne kiya hai hum sab ne apne milkar apni marzi se kiya ki is deal mein bharat ko jo bhi chahiye tha wo mila जो रफेल हम पहले खरीद रहे थे उससे इससे अच्छे वेपन्स मिले हैं हमें उससे अच्छे मेंटेनेंस मिले हैं उससे अच्छी ट्रेनिंग मिली है उससे ज़्यादा एक्सटेंडेड वारंटी मिली है और बहुत अच्छा मेंटेनेंस पैकेज मिला और सबसे ज़रूरी जो मल्टी वेंडर प्रोक्योरमेंट में जो एल वन था उससे भी कम कीमत में हमने ये जहाज खरीदा है अ लेटर फ्रॉम देन प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ फ्रांस मैनुअल वॉल्स इज ऑल्सो सर्फिस इन विच ही हैड रिटर्न टू प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी एंड ऑफर्ड फुल सपोर्ट टू द डील The Supreme Court has already given a clean chit to the government on the Rafale deal but the opposition has been raking this matter for long. With inputs from Ravindra Singh Sharan, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Meanwhile, the Lok Sabha on Friday also took up the discussion on the interim budget amid uh, opposition protests over the Rafale deal. The discussion was initiated by BJD MP Tathagat Satpathi who targeted the government for completely following misdeeds and modus operandi. of the previous congress government however participating in the discussion uh, bjp mp anurag thakur said that the budget was for an aspirational class and will benefit uh, 12 crore farmers 30 crore laborers 
and 3.5 crore middle class. However, continuing with the protest, Congress members also staged a walkout from the House. Yes, I firmly believe that this goal of 500 rupees a month or 6,000 rupees a year or if we calculate 7 rupees, a paltry 7 rupees a day is definitely not what the Indian farmer wants or deserves. All you could come up with is a kind of old age pension. Even a tractor tank will not be filled with these 7 rupees a day. That is the best that your brilliant brains could produce. पांच साल बाद आज छह हजार रुपए का एक लॉलीपॉप जो कि चुनाव तक दो हजार रुपए ही बनते हैं वो सरकार ने दी कल ओला वृष्टि पूरे नॉर्थन इंडिया में हुई है मैं सरकार से आग्रह करूंगा कि किसान के लिए इतना गंभीर है तो तुरंत प्रभाव से स्पेशल गिरदावरी उस पूरे वाक्य की करवाए कि किसान को आज एटलीस्ट जिसने फसल बीमा ले रखा है उसका पैसा मिलने का काम किया जाए जहाँ एजुकेशन की बात करी पूरे इस बजट के अंदर जीडीपी का जो शेयर एजुकेशन का उसमें एक परसेंट की पॉइंट वन परसेंट का भी इंक्रीज इस सरकार ने नहीं किया खुशी इस बात की है विकास का कि ये जो बजट इस बार का है ये नए भारत के निर्माण के लिए जिस तरह का ये बजट का प्रावधान किया गया ये गरीब का किसान का नौजवान का मध्य वर्ग का बजट है सबका साथ सबका विकास मूल मंत्र के साथ इस बजट को तैयार किया गया है सबको सशक्त करने वाला एस्पिरेशनल क्लास का बजट है आकांक्षाओं वाले वर्ग का बजट है इस बजट से माननीय अध्यक्ष जी लगभग जो साढ़े तीन करोड़ से ज्यादा हमारा मध्य वर्ग के परिवार है बारह करोड़ से ज्यादा हमारे किसान हैं तीस करोड़ से ज्यादा हमारे मजदूर हैं उन सबको लाभ मिलने वाला है The Rafale issue disrupted proceedings in both houses of parliament on Friday. In the upper house, uh, the proceedings were also disrupted due to the standoff on the issue of the roster system for recruitments in universities. The chairman urged the members to maintain order, saying that all issues could be discussed, but to no avail. HRD Minister Prakash Javadekar clarified the position of the government on the issue of reservation roster of universities and colleges in the upper house on Friday. He said that if the government's review petition is not accepted in the Supreme Court, then the government has the option of bringing an ordinance or a bill on the issue and the government will use this option. Javadekar also gave his assurance of no recruitment till the issue was resolved. Sir, पिछले दो दिन दिन से एक विषय बहुत महत्वपूर्ण निकला जिससे लोग आंदोलित थे कि यूनिवर्सिटी में आरक्षण कैसे होता है तो मैं आज ये बताना चाहता हूँ कि सबकी भावना भी सुनी है और सरकार हमेशा सामाजिक न्याय के पक्ष में है तो रिव्यू पिटीशन खारिज होने के स्थिति में हम अध्यादेश ऑर्डिनेंस या बिल जो भी है वो करने का हमने फैसला किया है आप तो आपकी यही मांग थी वो सरकार कर रही है और वो भी मैं कल ले करता हूँ क्योंकि ये बहुत ही महत्वपूर्ण है कितना पक्ष रखा है और हमने नया स्टडी किया है जिसमें तीस यूनिवर्सिटीज का केस स्टडी करके कि अभी अगर डिपार्टमेंट वाइज करेंगे तो कैसे अन्याय होता है शेड्यूल का शेड्यूल ट्राइब ओबीसी पर यह पूरा हमने विश्लेषण किया है और इसलिए अगर रिव्यू पिटिशन मंजूर नहीं होता तो हम सरकार का यह विकल्प खुला है कि ऑर्डिनेंस या बिल राइट राइट प्लीज तब तक ये भर्ती कहीं नहीं होगी ठीक है ये भी हम इंश्योर करेंगे आफ्टर दिस द चेयरमैन एक्सप्रेस्ड डिस्प्लेजर ऑन गेटिंग टू नो दैट पैम्फलेट्स वर फाउंड इन द हाउस एंड आज द राज्यसभा सेक्रेटरी जनरल टू इन्वेस्टिगेट द मैटर किसने दिया Yes. How can anybody distribute pamphlets in the house? How can anybody distribute pamphlets or this leaflets in the house? Uh, we will order an inquiry. Secretary General, we will order an inquiry, and then find out.
The chairman also said that he has received notices from several members for discussion on the roster issue, but the matter stands resolved after the minister's reply. He also informed the House about receiving notices on the Rafale case. The chairman suggested that during discussions on the motion of thanks to the president's address, the members can raise these issues and also seek the government's response. Honorable members, I have received notice under 267, Professor Manoj Kumar Jha, uh, with regard to that roster thing that has been settled, uh, along with uh, Mesa Bharati, then uh, Sri D. Raja about the same issue, Sri Ravi Prakash Verma about the same issue, Sri Javed Ali Khan about the same issue, Sri Ashok Siddhartha about the same issue, Sri Sanjay Singh about the same issue, and then that has been already discussed and then answered, Sri Era Elamaran Karim, alleged intervention by PMO in Rafael deal. Sri Anand Sharma, demand for JPC investigation to alleged irregularities in corruption in Rafael deal. I have deserved them. The, now you have a great opportunity of discussing all these issues in detail and question. You please sit down, na? Yeah, and then demand answer from the government during the discussion on President's address to the House. That's a larger opportunity given to all of you. Please, already we have lost so much time. And you have, we are left with only three more days. I, I, I appeal to all the members once again, please allow the House to function and then discuss these issues in President's address. That's my advice to all of you. But Congress members disrupted proceedings, following which the Chairman adjourned the House for the day till Monday. House is adjourned to meet at 11 a.m. on Monday. That is the 11th. Panchanan Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha TV. All right, let's get you some other news now. Prime Minister Narendra Modi arrived in Guwahati on Friday on a two-day visit to the northeast states of Arunachal, Assam and Tripura. Prime Minister Modi will reach Itanagar from Guwahati today and unveil a series of development projects at IG Park. He will lay the foundation stone for the construction of a greenfield airport at a Holongi in Arunachal Pradesh. The airport will boost the economic growth of the region and will be of strategic importance to the country. Besides this, the Prime Minister will also lay the foundation stone of a cellar tunnel. The tunnel will provide all weather connectivity to Tawang Valley for civilians as well as security forces throughout the year. PM Modi will also dedicate a new DD channel for Arunachal Pradesh, DD Arun Prabha. The channel will be the 24th channel operated by Doordarshan. 50 health and wellness centres in Arunachal Pradesh will also be inaugurated by the Prime Minister. In Assam, the Prime Minister will also lay the foundation stone of Northeast uh, Gas Grid in Guwahati. The Prime Minister will also inaugurate a uh, long modular gas processing plant in Tinsukia. And on the last leg of his visit, uh, the Prime Minister will dedicate to the country the Garji Bellonia railway line in Tripura. The railway line will boost Tripura as the gateway to the South and the Southeast Asia. He will also inaugurate a new complex of Tripura Institute of Technology. The Prime Minister will also unveil the statue of Beer Bikram Kishore Mankia Bahadur at Maharaja Beer Bikram Airport. An earlier Prime Minister Narendra Modi was in West Bengal yesterday where he addressed a public meeting in Jalpaiguri and criticizing Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee's recent sit-in protest. PM Modi accused her of siding with those who had robbed the poor of the state. He also warned that neither the perpetrators nor those shielding them would be spared. Prime Minister Narendra Modi laid the foundation stone for the four laning of the Falakata Salsabari section of National Highway 31D and also inaugurated the long awaited circuit bench of the Calcutta High Court in West Bengal on Friday. Addressing a public meeting, the Prime Minister accused West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee of trying to protect those involved in cheat fund scams and warned that neither the perpetrators nor the shielder will be spared. पश्चिम बंगाल की बहन बेटियां मजदूर कामगार करोड़ों लोग आज ममता दीदी से सवाल पूछ रहे हैं जिन्होंने अपने जीवन भर की कमाई लूट जाने की वजह से प्राण त्याग दिए उनके परिवार वाले आज ममता दीदी से सवाल पूछ रहे हैं वो जानना चाहते हैं चीट फंड घोटाले की जांच से 
आप इतना क्यों डरी हुई है Prime Prime Minister Modi criticized the the Congress over its women's wing chief Sushmita Dev's assertion that the law against instant triple talaq will be scrapped if the party was voted to part. साथियों कांग्रेस ने अब खुल करके कह दिया है कि वो तीन तलाक चलने देगी मुस्लिम बेटियों की बर्बादी होने देगी तीन तलाक को रोकने के कानून का विरोध करती और कहते हम आएंगे तो इस कानून अगर मोदी ला करके जाएगा तो भी खत्म कर देंगे प्रिडिक्टिंग द डाउनफॉल ऑफ द तृणमूल कांग्रेस गवर्नमेंट इन द नेक्स्ट इलेक्शन द प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेट बीजेपी इज परफॉर्मेंस इन नेबरिंग त्रिपुरा विल बी रेप्लीकेटेड इन वेस्ट बंगाल The prime minister also launched a rath that would tour every part of the state and seek views of people on providing better governance. Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV. In breakfast news time for a very short break news and updates continue on the other side don't go anywhere. In this edition we'll take a closer look at the new regulatory framework for broadcasting and cable services. implemented by try 130 rupees is the carriage price for carrying any 100 channel it could be a pay channel it could be free to air channel and therefore you can have the combination of free to air channel pay channel and therefore to, and also 25 dd mandatory channel so this whole scheme is empowerment right. to the consumer the experience of the common customer is that when he is picking up all those channels which he was interested in and and the free to air channel which we call fta his cost at the moment per month is coming out higher these operators are putting high end channels on the first and That's that right. is why the cost of the entire suggested pack is going to be higher than what i am use i used to pay the prices would be hiked by around 200 rupees multi home tv so we are working in case it is not workable by the uh, respective dth operator and mso operator then we will we will do something on that president ramnath kovind has said that pils have redefined the justice delivery system by becoming the voice of the poor but he said that challenges remained as vested interests exploited pils to obstruct legitimate decision making speaking at the release of a book law justice and judicial power justice uh, pn bhagwati's approach which was uh, formally released by chief justice of india ranjan gogoi president ramnath kovin said that there are occasions when public interest litigation professionals may misuse the provisions for their vested ends or to obstruct legitimate decision making but the president noted that the judiciary is guarding against such attempts he also called for the need to address new challenges in social and economic sphere the pil tradition is an indian contribution to the practice of law and the process of justice delivery this has been admired by other democracies and other legal systems as well yes there are occasions when pil professionals may misuse such provisions for their own vested ends or to obstruct legitimate decision making i am happy that the judiciary is guarding against such attempts Robert Wadra will be questioned again by the enforcement directorate today and this will be the third time in 4 days that uh, he will be questioned by the investigating agency in a money laundering case Wadra was questioned by the ED on Thursday for over 9 hours and he was earlier questioned for around 6 hours for the first time in the case on Wednesday The ED case against Robert Wadra relates to the allegations of money laundering in the purchase of a London-based property worth 1.9 million British pounds which is allegedly owned by him. ED has told a Delhi court that it has received information about various new properties in London which belong to Robert Wadra including two houses, six flats and more properties. Earlier this month the Delhi court had directed Robert Wadra to cooperate with the investigating agencies uh, after ed filed uh, after he filed an anticipatory bail plea in the case robert wadra has uh, denied the allegations of possessing illegal foreign assets and he has termed them a political witch hunt 
And uh, the other top story this morning, uh, Kolkata Police Commissioner Rajiv Kumar is in Shillong to appear before the CBI for questioning in connection with the central agency's ongoing probe into the chit fund cases. Rajiv Kumar is accompanied by three top state uh, police officials. Uh, the Supreme Court, remember, had fixed the Meghalaya capital as the venue for his interrogation. And uh, on Tuesday, the Supreme Court had also directed uh, the Kolkata Police Commissioner to appear before the CBI and faithfully cooperate with the probe into the cases related to the chit fund scam. The CBI has alleged in the Supreme Court that Rajiv Kumar, who led the probe by a special investigation team into the Sharada chit fund scam, tampered with the evidence and handed over the documents to the agency, some of which had been doctored. A major controversy had broken out on Sunday when a team of CBI officers went to Kumar's residence to question him but faced a stiff resistance from the Kolkata police. And following this, the Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee had staged a three-day protest. 41 people are reported to have died after consuming spurious liquor in adjoining districts of Saharanpur and Haridwar in Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand. The incident was first reported on Friday after most of the victims consumed the liquor on Thursday evening at the 13th day of the morning ceremony of a relative in Balupur village in Haridwar. According to the police, 16 people died in the village and 18 more deaths were reported from Saharanpur district as people who had attended the ritual returned home. Uttarakhand government has suspended 17 administration and police personnel and has ordered a magisterial probe. In Uttar Pradesh, 10 policemen have been suspended. And a life-size portrait of former Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee will be installed in the Central Hall of Parliament on 12th of February. The portrait will be unveiled by President Ramnath Kovind in the presence of Vice President M. Venkya Naidu, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, ministers and leaders of various parties. Born on 25th of December 1924 in Gwalior in Madhya Pradesh, the BJP veteran passed away on 16th of August last year after a prolonged illness. And the Trump administration has announced that it will launch two projects in India for women's economic empowerment. The project, in partnership with the private sector, is part of the U.S.'s initiative to empower 50 million women globally to tap their economic potential. The initiative will be led by Ivanka Trump, the senior advisor and daughter to President Donald Trump. Donald Trump had uh, signed a memorandum to launch the Women's Global Development and Prosperity Initiative and one of the programs in India will be launched in West Bengal. Sports news now. Indian pair of Rohan Bapanna and Devit Sharan have entered the doubles uh, semi-finals of the Sofia Open in Bulgaria. The duo defeated Alexander Donsky and Alexander Lazarov of Bulgaria 6-3, 6-1 in the quarter-finals. In the semi-finals to be played today, the Indian pair will face the Awan Indonesian pair of Cheng Pong and Christopher. And with that, we wrap up this edition of Breakfast News. Thanks for watching. Have a lovely day ahead.